do not want you, you're out in 30 days. So you don't leave in 30 days, you have the paperwork that you send them certified, they signed for it, they received it, and they declined it. And then you can get them out. Even with kids, people think, oh, can't get you out, you got kids. No. Cool. Even well, with kids, you can get them out. Does anybody else have any questions about that? What, yes. What, uh, can you define the uh, fair market value? Like if it's 12, if, if <clears throat> comps are at 1500 and they're paying 1250, is that you can up it to 1500? Like, how is that, is that subjective or is it just like? It, yeah, that's a little close. Normally when you have somebody that has a lease, the, <clears throat> the, what you, what'll happen is people that are in hardships and um, uh, owners that they'll give anything to a tenant just to get a couple bucks. They're 800, 750 is normally what I say. Um, where fair market value is 2000 to 1500 it's usually with townhomes. They're not paying the association. Just, so you know, if it's a townhome, the association will foreclose way before the bank. It, it's they're, they're, they're literally catapulting to, to foreclose right away on that. Um, but yes, yeah, you would then be able to uh, go to court and get fair market value. 1250 to 1500 I don't know if it's worth all the money. You know, that's not really that much of a difference. If it was, you're trying to get it. You're just trying to vacate the property really yeah yeah 1250 1500 i would say is not worth the time and the energy um unfortunately i would raise their rent you can raise it every year i think it's five percent does it default to um renewing to a month a month even if they're not paying unless you serve them yeah you're accepting that they're not paying so you have to give them a letter you have to say listen this is your notice i'm putting you on notice because remember, you can also use the uh, security if they've damaged property or if they haven't paid and you have a hardship and you need that money to pay the rent. You and then you can serve them the you second. You hand it to them? Like, how do you prove that you presented it to them? You send a certified letter. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, sign receipt, certified sign receipt. Or you do a carrier that's licensed. Like, I have my, I have my, um, um, collector's license in the state of New Jersey. I got it. it. Took me six months to get it. Probably the only broker in New Jersey that has it. I'm, I'm thinking I probably I I am. So I'm sure I'm certified and I'm um, backed by I'm bonded. So I could actually go even though I'm not like I don't know one of those people that come and take your picture because I have that license. I can go and I can. Uh, it's just another bonus. What does one that of mean? My okay. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah. It means that I can negotiate for, instead of, you know how you have an asset manager or does anybody do a short sale? Raise your hand if you've done a short sale before. Any, anybody raising their hand besides Joe? Yeah. No. Okay. So in short sales, what it was is, you know, the agent, you, when you did a short sale, you almost had like a processor that processed it. So it would be you dealing with your client, all right? Then you dealing with the processor and the processor dealing with the bank. Oh, so I get what it. Is, it would take to do a short sale. People are like, I hate it. If you didn't have a, a system, a regiment of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you weren't getting short sales done. Like I, it, I had a regiment, like you would find me in the same spot every day of that week, like doing what I did. Um, like clockwork. Like you couldn't, if you came near me, it was like, get the fuck out. I got to get my shit done. M what it's doing with my license is it's taking that middle person and kicking them out. So in essence, because I'm bonded, I'm protected. So you can't come after me. You can't sue me because I have, I'm bonded. I can deal directly with the bank in doing a short sale. It's, just, it's a really cool, my asset manager um, through coaching um, about a year ago told me to do it. And it took me six months, but we got it. Um, so I can, I put it with my business and personal. So it's with, I opened up my REO business. It's attached to that. And now it's on my resume. So when I go to like five star and I talk to asset managers and investors, it's like, hey, listen, you know what? I can knock on that door. Even though it says, don't trespass, don't come in. I'm bonded and licensed. I'm like, what's that guy with the blonde hair? Yeah, dude, yeah, you're your dog, the bounty hunter. That's it. <laughs> what a... <that's> so <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, Sam, did you have something for, on this? I wouldn't recommend getting bonded. Yeah, yeah Jen, um, when you're going yeah. through this process, whether for you or if it's for your buyers or investors, are they, do they have an eye on like, open permits, potential CO issues, like landlording yeah. issues? Yeah, so we do that right away. So the second that we get um, assigned an asset, the first thing that we do, it goes to, um, I'm just gonna, Olivia, she's in that department. So we go, we do an OPRA right away. We request any- Tell them what that is. Tell them what an OPRA is. An OPRA. OPRA, yeah. Tell me what it is. It's, 
<laughs> it's not Oprah, like Oprah Winfrey. It's yeah, um, what it is, is you submit it into the town and on the bottom portion, you'll ask for any open, you can find out about septics, wells, um, is permits. It's trying to turn is that open public records act. Huh? It's a, it's, a, it's a law called the Open Public Records Act, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you, I didn't know you wanted open public. I didn't know you wanted I'm a, I'm a realtor. I didn't know you wanted the acronym. There's a, yeah. there's a law called the Open Public Records Act. What Joe was trying to get Jen to say was there's a law called the Open Public Records Act where anybody, any citizen or whatever can go and request anything that's public information from the town. And right now it's all electronic. You just have to pay for the copy, the, the whatever it costs to copy, 35 cents a page or whatever. But now they send it all to you electronically about open permits or. Yeah, now it's free. Survey and stuff like that. You can look at uh, code mm -hmm. violations and things like that. That's what Joe was trying to get Jen to say. And then I think he wants you to say like, what do you do with that? Oh, okay. There you go, Gil. Good. Um, I don't know. Good implementer. So yes. So what we do is we go, we request that. It usually takes maybe, you know, uh, two, three, four days um, at the most, depending on how backed up the town is. Then we take that, we take that to the, the investor and that's going to help make a determination on after repair value, what we're going to do to the house, like all of that stuff. What, you know, it, it just kind of helps us with our numbers because it does make a difference, especially in the town. Um, if it's a crazy town that we know is, you know, hell and high water and we have all these open permits, like, it also protects you because when you're doing um, bank owned short sales, when you're doing all that, the town definitely knows and the town definitely abuses you. <laughs> right. And is that, what's the order there? Are these are buyers trying to get it under contract and deal with this stuff as quick as they can or vice versa? We do it before it hits the market. So the second that we okay. get assigned the asset, that's we, we start our due diligence. Um, that's the first thing we do before we even do a BPO. Um, and then we do, you know, we get the house cleared out and then we do a home, we do a home inspection and a septic inspection if applicable on every house prior to even doing after repair value. We learned, okay, so in doing this for so many years, and you know, if, if anybody ever decides to get into that for investors and stuff like that, <coughs> um, the value is, is just it, that you can bring them by making them do the smallest things prior to purchasing a house or something like that. You have no idea how many times like I sat there and I literally had to be like, this is what you need to do because if you don't, you're going to hold the property from nine to 12 months and it took them a while, but now they pretty much just let me run the show. So it's fine. Me and my, my team, of course. We love it. Cool. So yeah. awesome. Jen, what you work with a lot of really smart um, investors and like hedge fund people that like do a lot of like, they probably spend a lot of money and do a lot of research to like try to figure out what's going to happen with this real estate market moving into the future, yeah. say like the next like, 12, 18. I, um, Is that correct? Yes. So I just actually, I wanted to tell you, I was going to text you, but I figured I'd save it for this. Um, I was, uh, I got the honor of getting um, invited to a master, well, not a mastermind. It's literally like um, a forecast of the market from one of the biggest uh, hedge funds in the country. Um, I got the invite yesterday and it's on my calendar and it's from five to six 30 on Friday via zoom so i'm going to be in my office locked in my table and on that invite um was 66 other uh billion dollar million dollar i don't know heavy hitter hedge funds um that is just going to be sitting there and just talking about you know what my passion is and what i love to do and it's like i literally like goosebumps like i'm telling you it was like i came in and we took this this platform and I'm going to, I'm going to record it and I'm going to be, you know, I'll share it with everybody and anybody that, um, creates a passion for, you know, um, the REO world. Cause that's literally like, I just love it. And to know what's going to happen and what they think is going to happen and where they're going to start spending money. And it's going to be just amazing. Um, I'd be happy to share it with you, but yeah, it's like, so now I have a hit list of 66 people, um, that we put on our wealth chart for prospecting, but I don't know if that's the other beyond. But it's pretty good. So I will know the forecast. The forecast that I believe is in 18 months. Um, it's going to be insane. I think that if you uh, like working with investors and this kind of industry, you absolutely, absolutely need to know how to do a short sale. You need to start marketing them. Um, we already send them to them. We've already put download. You okay, Joe? Yeah. So I don't understand. Like if the market's doing so well right now, why are there going to be short sales? Pretend I'm like the stupidest person on earth. Because the market's doing well for people that are coming from Manhattan, the, you know, $1.3 million of people that came from Manhattan, they're willing to, so uh, you guys are taking buyers out. Okay. So I've talked to my client. So they're willing to say, okay, this house is worth 600. 
don't pay 700 because in Manhattan, it's worth fucking 7 million. So they're all going to do this. And you know what? Let me just tell you, okay? I'm going to use my case in point, me. I thought I could leave Jackson. I'm a fucking tree loving girl that likes to ride quads and just chill. All right. Um, you know, I'd rather be in the woods and sleep in a tent than any five star hotel in the world. Okay. That's where I want to be. I went to Shrewsbury. All right. And if you're familiar with Shrewsbury, love it. Not my people, not my thing. I lasted 10 months. These people that are coming from Manhattan that are used to going in their Starbucks at 24 hours a day and going to this and going to that and that are going to these royal communities and going to these royal towns, they're not going to stay. They're going to leave. And then the people, all the small businesses that um, lost their jobs, that can't, you got to remember this COVID thing, it's still going on. People are losing their jobs. They're not making money. They're, it's, everything's, so what's going to happen is the mortgages are going to go. So right now, if you don't pay your mortgage, you're, you're okay. They're giving you a relief. So if anybody that's bought a house recently, um, even though everybody on your credit report, you cannot pay your mortgage for the last six months. It's not going to come up late on your credit report. So what you have to do is you have to actually go and give the bank statement in the check that was cashed from the bank to prove if you want to buy a house that you're actually buying it because there's a forgiveness act that's going on right now. Once that's all done and the foreclosure market and all these people that haven't been paying for five years and now took another, they are ready to go. These, these investors and these hedge funds and these banks have not been able to do business, okay, in nine months. Like my hedge fund that I work for, we were literally, we were talking, we're like, okay, well, I have $27 million in, in New Jersey, all right? If I don't sell like the occupieds and stuff like that, it's all gonna get wiped away. So they're gonna take less money and they're gonna be very aggressive with the, with the foreclosures. I talked to, you know, the, my guy that we do sheriff sales with, he's out of the business. Three years ago, four years ago, he was selling 700 houses a year in New Jersey. Now, I think I have like maybe 12 left in Ocean County with him and a couple in Monmouth County. Um, and he's closing up shop. He, he, now this is a guy, I, okay. There's three people in, in, the, in, I don't know, the world, in the United States that can print their own money. My client, Heim, which my girl next door will vouch for it, is one of them. He literally had the banking industry come in and we have this thing and I used to go to sheriff's sale and he'd print me out two, three, four, five million dollars to go and buy properties. Like this is legit. This guy is closing up shop and now he's going to multifamilies and he goes to Florida every day. If these people know what they're talking about, if they're telling me it's going to be 12 to 18 months, I'm going to take them and run with it because they know. And I'll know more Friday. I'll record it and I'll send it to Joe. It'll be, Joe more in the, it'll be in the lower price points. Is that true or no? It always starts in the lower price points and from everything that I've ever seen in doing short sales and doing foreclosures and doing REOs. Um, I have like, there's one I have in Rumson that's, you know, 1.4. There's the Princeton is actually, I have $4 million properties all within a mile in Princeton, which is just shocking to me. I really thought that was kind of crazy. Um, Yo, anyone that's on, uh, on this real estate team, what do you guys think it looks like if you're like, listing based and prospecting based in 12 months when the shift comes really good yo you're going to disneyland like gil showed you in, on the slide like you're like we're going to this <laughs> like things are really good like worse like i just got off the phone with my coach and he was like wow you guys are really set up to take advantage of this thing in 12 to, in 12 to 18 months so um Absolutely. So if you're not you know if you guys like what jen's saying right now is like have you done a short sale nobody in here raised their hand like uh, you know, like we, we, the system's in place. Like we know how to do that, right? As a matter of fact, Kim Flodderin was my short sale negotiator, right? When I was doing short sales, that, that was how we got into a relationship. But yeah, when you're prospecting based, like think about when you guys hit the phones and nobody's answering, right? Or you're like, oh, I couldn't get any, like, dude, everyone's going to be answering. And when it comes to, when it's hard to sell a house, they're going to want someone that sold a hundred houses last year or someone that's been in the business for 10 years. That's what, like, that's when you can't just hire Mike, because he got his, you know, your brother who got his real estate license, they're going to need someone who really can sell houses. Um, And that's when we're going to have a lot of inventory that like this is if if you think you're doing well now. um, And it's funny, man. And the other cool part, and you know, and Jen knows this because because she's been doing it like when that shift happens, every realtor leaves the business. They all go jobs, man. And it's like, finally, God, I can move in here. Give me some space, you know, like let me sell some houses. So yeah. uh, I'm telling you guys, like it's a, I'm amped. It's a really fun right. place to be. I can't wait. Everyone's just going to be like sneaking out the back door and I'm like, all right, it's time to get to work. Um, yeah. It's going to be fun. One thing, can I, uh, I made this video in 
the end of May or June or whatever, I call it the window of opportunity. And like the one thing that I'll say that I learned this year was like, um, the, this cycle is taking longer than expected. Like everybody, like I, I was like, this is it, this is, it's happening now. And I, I think I said something like, I think you have like six to eight weeks to sell your house and take advantage of this thing. And really it's like, we're six to eight months into it. And we're starting to see this like plateau of demand. Mm -hmm. Like I quoted Evan the other day when he was like, we're in this market where sellers think they can do whatever they want. And it's crazy. And like the buy on the buy side, people are like the, the secrets out. Like we, we, they know that it's a seller's market right now. And everybody's just talking about the um, six inches in front of their face thing about low interest rates and that i i'm also a little bit skeptical of this like demand from new york is like like people i think people oversimplify that in terms of like every fucking person that's north of us north of exit 140 on the parkway or whatever is like just coming to monmouth county forever like i don't think it's um just that and it's definitely a factor but it's not like every house that sells forever from now on is going to do that and only <clears throat> The, the migration trend are the migration trends are longer and like you listen to um i i listened to sam harris he just did a podcast yesterday i recommend with nicholas christophe christakis or whatever he's talking about the timeline of the virus and vaccines and things like that and they're talking about 2024 in terms of like echo of, he is a historical impact of like when you look back at the 1918 pandemic and there's definitely differences between now and then but um how things start to come back in terms of like, um, it might be actually safe to go to restaurants, but people are, they're not gonna, even even though it might be safe to go, people aren't gonna go in 2021. And there's like this like psychological uh, echo that comes after what we just went through, let alone the fact that like, there is still this it's an ongoing loose germ that's out there. It doesn't go away. We don't know the vaccines are, like the timeline of all these things, legitimate concerns about the safety of the vaccine because it's rushed to market for political reasons. and. It, it's a we're living in a very complex time with a multivariate scenario like you've got the pandemic you have you have a long-term debt cycle you have the pandemic you have the stock market you have the market as it was we're a little bit of an anomaly because we've got the new york factor versus the rest of the country like it's it's not easy to decipher what's going to happen and forecast in each individual market or um neighborhood or whatever but these timelines sort of overlap what I was trying to get at is like, I was envisioning this all compressed into very, like you could see it all play out in terms of like, hey, this doesn't look good. Um, in the short term, it turned out to be really strong, like supportive and uh, strong for demand in the housing market locally and nationally, but especially locally. And then it's just a matter of like, at what point does that shake out in terms of all these factors that we're talking about? Moratoriums getting lifted for evictions and foreclosures and the long-term impacts of that the job loss factor migration patterns like we there's too many variables to know but at some point i thought it was gonna be six to eight weeks we're now six to eight months it's gonna be a couple of years to see this all play out and it's and nobody's gonna know the real answer that's right yeah that was intense <laughs> i just i was like Okay. Listen, this is what I say. I like to simplify it. I, I'm, 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 I'm not smart, um, but I can watch, uh, I can watch Facebook. And what I see now is instead of, you know, multiple offers and this and that, if you look at the heavy hitter, um, real estate, um, agents that have teams, um, I'm seeing price reductions. That's what I'm seeing. Um, I've been seeing it all week and I look at that and I'm seeing, you know, not as many, um, boasting agents that have been in the business for fucking two weeks that they have, you know, 10,000 houses and they're doing this and they're doing that. So when I start seeing that, I see it with my team, one of my agents, she put three properties under contract in one weekend, like offers accepted, like it's changing. So, um, I think that, uh, I think it's going to be pretty interesting on my call on Friday. I am so stoked and so honored and so blessed to be like part of that call. Like I can't wait to literally, record it, take it and share it with like all you people, all of my team, you know, everybody that, yeah, dude, I can't wait. I can't like you asked me that. I wish that this call was next Thursday because you think like, I don't know if anybody knows me, I was on a call this morning with, um, with Brett and all them 
And like, I was just like super stoked just about the event and stuff like that. But like, I'm very passionate about, you know, we all are, I don't think you'd be on this call if you weren't, um, what we do. And like, it's just, it's going to be a total and completely different market. And it's going to be a, a fun and, um, I don't know, engaging and, and knowledgeable. Like you're just going to learn so much shit in the next 12 months. Yeah, like it's going to get fun, man. It's going to be, I like how it's you're going to be fun. Like the new agent that got their license and sold 50 houses yesterday. Like, you know, like three offers, like, yeah, no shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, it's going to get fun where you have to come in. And guys, when that bit, when, that in, when, we're that holding, shit. when we're holding 20 or 30 listings, guess what? That's when you're going to be really happy you have Allie, right? You're going to be really happy you have systems. <laughs> really happy that, like, this is what we're ramping up for, man. The phone calls that you get in and then the buyer agent, divi- that's when you have to focus on a buyer agent division because that's who's going to be calling, man. Like, there's going to be a lot of inventory. And with that lot of inventory, the buyer's going to want to see a lot of stuff. And um, it's really, it's, it's, it's cool, man. It's really, it's really easy, you know? It's, and it's nothing, it's something to be really excited about. It's, uh, it's, Really, to be quite honest, man, this is the market that Gary Keller said, he stood up, he said in 2016, he was like doing this thing, you know, he did this whole thing where he's like real estate started in, you know, 1906 with Caldwell Banker and every 10 years it's been, you know, and he like went, like he was prepping us for it and uh, yeah. it didn't happen. Kind of like what Gil was saying, right? He's like, well, I thought it was going to be this. So when that thing happens, that's what we're all trained for, really. Like this is like easy this is easy stuff man but build and that's where the really 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 like man the big agents that built really big businesses in real estate i'm not just talking about selling houses that it, a lot of it, it was all done you know like i have a lot of a lot of friends that built this thing up uh between 2008 and 2012 because that's where all the opportunity is like kind of what you know what jen's talking about and things like that um if you have a couple dollars and you have some investors and you want to buy some houses build some wealth but um Okay, cool. Um, any, um, Jen, anything else that you're seeing in, in the future in the market shifting, anything else that you want to share with us? And then, yeah, we'd love to check back in with you after, after you have your mastermind on or your, 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 uh, your call on Friday. We don't like the word mastermind, Joe. <laughs> I hate it. No, I like it. Whatever. I'm listen. I no. I definitely want to check in with you guys after I don't have anything else unless anybody else has questions. I can hear all the people in the, in the lobby. Um, yeah. But uh, listen, so we're doing Wednesdays. We have agents that are coming in. Um, just want to open it up to you guys. We have uh, we have a huge challenge going on over here. And um, we have the office. I'm sure you guys have, but I gave everybody like coal and we're prospecting. We're spinning the wheel and whatever. But we're just kind of, you guys are always welcome. We do it every Monday and Wednesday all day. Um, you know, we're just trying to have fun. We're right here in Jackson. Um, so, you know. We can sit here and then, you know, call investors if you guys want. We can, but let's teach. If you guys want to learn um, how to do a short sale, like I'll fucking, I'll help y'all. I did it. I've trained it so many times. I've trained so many can people do, on how to do, do that. Like in this, <clears throat> can we do that like in this forum? Why don't we stay on, why don't we stay on this trend? How about this? Next Thursday, can we, can you do a recap of your call and then we'll just start yeah. on short sales? Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll have my team, if you don't mind, hop on too. And um, oh, if you cool. guys want, we can do, we can do, um, let's all get certified to do short sales. I, I've taught my team. They, they, that's, they come in and that's certified? it. Oh, I'm certified. How do you you do have to that? take a class. It's okay. your CDP certified distressed property expert. Absolutely. It was all a two day right. class. What? We're all, all right. Yeah. We want to do it. Yeah, no, it's, 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 two days. Let me tell you. There's, there's a, and Joe, I, please take this lovingly because I love you to death, but I would never fucking give an attorney or somebody else one of my deals and put my money and my financial freedom in their hand to get it done. So I never once, not once, and believe me, people were like, why don't you, like, dude, if you're going to learn, like, I, I like to learn. I can teach myself better than anybody else can teach me. I know it sounds a little weird or weird, no, I, believe I guess. I, I just did that because I didn't but, know any better. And that's what I was talking. No, 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 no. And no, 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 no. And I get that. I get that. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm the stupid one that worked friggin' a million. Did I lose money? I absolutely did. But you know what? It set me up for success for my future. I need to just join my team real quick. And Scott Eindenbinder referred the agent to me. He was an agent in White Guard. He did, you know, uh, made about a hundred thousand, seventy or something a year, whatever. Young guy. 
Um, and Scott calls me and he was like, the, the kid wants to do REOs. He's interested in bank owned properties. He's interested in whatever. And he goes and he tells me, he's like, I remember, cause he was in Diane Turton office when I first started and a couple other offices that I was in. And he was like, yeah, he goes, I'll never forget about you. He's like, you came up to me and was like, Scott, you know, I want to do, you know, short sales and I want to do this. And everybody tells me that I'm stupid and I'm not going to make any money on it. He goes, Jen, and look at you now. And I don't remember the conversation, but it was just like, it was just cool. And it was kind of like, all right, so maybe I'm not a total fucking retard for spending, you know, a million hours on every short sale. But the knowledge that I got that I was able to bring to my investors into the banks and stuff like that, it's just irreplaceable. It's just most people don't have it because they didn't go through it. Like I can figure out titles. I can figure out judgments. I, I like I can negotiate with, you know, lean hold. It's like, I don't know. I love it. I'll negotiate with anything. If you've got, if you're new to the business and have six months and one deal in your, under your belt, what are you doing to take advantage of this? Like in the next, you, months, or if you're trying to buy your own house or something like that. You, like, I'm a true, and I tell my team, find your niche. What do you love to do? Like, what do you love to do? If you love to like, if you love to do open houses, man, be the best of the best of the best at open houses and run with it. If you come in and, you know, I sit down when we do the onboarding, like, where do you see yourself in, in a year? Where do you sell yourself in three years? Where do you see yourself in five years? Okay, what's your 10 year plan? Like, where do you see yourself? What do you want to do? You know, not most people, if they can't answer that, you need to sit down and you have them hop around with different people and different you know, niches that people have and different things that they do and just kind of like say, all right, come in. All right, jump in the bullpen. Are you going to fail forward? Get on the phone. If you don't like to get on the phone, then send a postcard. I never prospected. I never got on the phone and I think I, I'm doing okay, but I knew that I wasn't a cold caller and I'm not going to knock on a door and I'm not going to do that. So I wanted to succeed. So I needed to find another way that I could succeed in the short sales and the foreclosure process. I was like, I love this. I can run with this. I don't need to deal with sellers. I don't need to ask for price reductions. I can make my business as big as I want, as much as I want. I know where to get the people that are in foreclosure. It's all free. You don't pay for that business. Oreo business is the most profitable business that you can ever, 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 ever be in because all you need is the MLS. You find people that are in pre foreclosure. You fucking call them. You put them in your dialer, however you want to do it. You have a VA go and say, okay, Take all these people, go on Spokio, find their number, put them in the Mojo Dollar. If you want to call me, I sent them a postcard. People that are in this situation know other people that are in this situation. So if you're in foreclosure, most likely you got a friend that's in foreclosure. And it, now I have people, um, the one most successful person, I'm literally right now, I have one of my agents showing her her fifth house that she's buying through me because she was getting divorced. She was very successful. It wasn't her fault. She actually had to pay $15,000 back to the bank. I did a short sale for her and Jackson on cross street. Um, she was embarrassed. We were at a baby shower. I went up to her privately and I said, listen, you know, we've been friends forever. I, I want to help you. And I came from complete and total. It's not about the money. If you go at it and it's about the money, people are never going to, they're going to see right through you. They're going to see right through you. But if you literally go from it, from contribution and say, listen, this is what I do. This is what I've done. This is how it goes. And, and, you come at, okay, help me. And we got a short sale in eight months. She already, she had a high rate. She had like 9.5 or something like that. She bought her first house. I sold that one. She bought another one, bought another one. And, you know, now she's moving them in Alpin. But that's what I would do, if that makes sense. You, that's a really great point. The, the short sale thing was really, it was a gold mine, right? Because like, yeah. like you, everyone that's on my team, like the, the, the Oz group apples, that you, like the, the fruit tree, like of the old, the old, clients so many of those were like short sell people man and i did the same thing we were handing i always talk about this man we found we made flyers and we were putting them on underneath people's windshield wipers at the mammoth mall like are you underwater are you in distress yeah. it said so we can save you from foreclosure like like what we did if we had like a like if our band was playing the saint we did the same thing we just handed out flyers except it was for real estate and we uh and we went to tax records and we could see if people were 90 90 days behind and we were sending yeah. them letters and we were doing all that stuff. It's, it's, it's totally true. It's another, we talk about this in our organization, how real estate is, there's so many little tiny businesses inside of your, like you're a perfect example, you know, like, uh, you know, it's so many different businesses in this thing and it's like, uh, and it's fun to build it all. That's our goal is to build all this stuff out and take advantage of it. And then when you have somebody that comes in and they say, I want to join the Joe Oz, you know, team, it's like, all right, well, what's your passion? Sit with this person that does foreclosures. Sit with this person that does organic. Sit with this buyer specialist. Sit, 
what where what seat do you see yourself you know in what hat do you want to wear and that's what we do we come in some people want nothing to do with reos you know many of my team agents they wanted fucking nothing to do with it nothing and they just said i want to be a buyer's agent i want to be a listing specialist and it's like you have that opportunity and you guys as teams when you're going out there and you're recruiting and you're talking it's not even recruiting like i hate that word if you hate mastermind i fucking hate the word recruiting i like opportunity you know builder or just like this is the opportunity that I have. This is what I want. This is the culture that I have. This is my vision. Like, that's my big thing is like, this is my vision of what I want for this branch office. If you can see this vision, we'll continue to have a conversation. If you can't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, go somewhere else. I don't know. But that's kind of where we're at. <clears throat> that means yeah, that's awesome. A, a really good leader. I'll, like, I'll, about see you, uh, I'll see you peeps next week. And I'm going to be like really hyper because I'm going to be so excited about what's going to happen. So... I'm How's gonna, the brother there? You have your event today, right? My event is today. I, yo, I'm wearing a tutu. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I, I get it. Um, <laughs> it's orange, though. It goes with the vision. It goes with the office. We got orange all over cool. here. We're like How about this? Anyone have any questions for Jen before she goes? Um, yeah, any on pause we want to share? I got a question before we go. Um, back on I landlord know. and tenants, we have a property that they want to list, and we unable to get in there to do photos and set up the house to put on the market auction.com uh the tenants are being uncooperative and their their lease is up so they've been just doing month to month as it is so what's the best way to get a hold of them and get put it on auction.com auction and then put it in the mls yep and just say that the tenants are non-cooperative you can't approach don't go on the property and you'll find an investor investors don't care about the inside they don't Okay. And no, give them work, as it's, it's, like, it's, it's like so find your time. client with make sure that you have readily available for the people that call what you think the as is and what you think the after repair value is and what you think the cost estimate would be to get to that after repair value. And any investor that calls you is gonna think you're an absolutely fucking rock star and they're gonna want to work with you. So what if there is like uh their it's their first time home and it looks pretty nice. Like it's not like um I don't think like an investor would be interesting who else is going to buy it it's got a tenant in it that's not cooperative you're not going to get i'm not going to buy it if i wanted to go and live there because i'm not going to be able to live there and i'm not going to be able to not going to have the knowledge or the time or the energy to deal with that so the only client that you have for a buyer is going to be an investor i hate to be negative but i'm just being honest oh, yeah. makes sense yeah billy bob's not going to come and say hey listen sue don't worry, I'll take bedroom three and you can stay in bedroom two. Like, it's just not gonna happen. So there's no other route, like you said earlier, of uh, raising their rent or like trying to find a different if way. If they're not cooperative, you said they're not cooperative, correct? Yeah, they've just been dodging uh, the sellers. They just won't let them get a hold of them. Well, they can send a certified letter. Are they paying rent? Month to month, yes. So they can, they can up the rent 100%. Um, and they have to, they have to send them the certified letter that we, we had discussed earlier saying that they no longer are renewing their lease and then they will get them out. So if it's a month to month, they just have to, and they're paying, they just have to send a certified letter that they no longer, um, would like to be in a tenant landlord relationship with them and make sure it's certified sign receipt with a date and let them know, because if the landlord gives at least 24 hour notice, the landlord can go to the tenant's house. And now the, the letter, how long do they have to get out? Like after they send them the letter, we're not really like 30 days. It's a 30 day notice. It's a 30 day notice. Okay. So if you're on a month to month, they have, you give them the notice on, on December 1st, January 1st, they need to be out and the house needs to be broom swept. If they're not out by January 1st and the landlord has a hardship and needs to pay their rent, they can then use the security. And then you just have to notify the tenant that you've used X amount of the security towards that month's rent because what all tenants do is they leave and they don't anticipate to ever get their security back so they don't care anyway right it's a common thing all right thank you very rare i should say that they um are going to get their security back thank you of course anytime can i have a quick one um when you're having we talked about the cash for keys conversation before when you're having that conversation who are you? Are you the agent representing an investor? Are yes. you, you're, yeah. you're, it's, that's. I work on the high I'm here on the behalf of the bank. Got it. And 
I'm here to negotiate. And, you know, I, I did get one pushback. Well, I've gotten pushback a couple of times where I had to actually show verification. But um, like the police officer was like, there's scams all over. And I knew everything about Asbury Park. So I was able to name drop. And then he was like, okay, you're good. But yeah. Got it. You just have to go in there. I always bring my business card. Always. Right. Perfect. And I actually have REO business cards that state, like, this is what I do. Like, no joke. Like, boom. So it's like, okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right, guys. The kids are screaming for some candy. <laughs> Thank um, you for being here, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Joe. Thank, Thank you, you. You guys that was are awesome. awesome. Keep killing it. Joe, I don't know if we're staying on for any reason. I got to run, though. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, we're not. We're not staying on for any reason. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, guys.